We seem to be experimenting some technological differences. If you'd be so kind, would you mind introducing yourself for the podcast? Yeah, cool. Uh, so my name is Brad. Um, I'm playing in Soul Mortis, the name of the project. So right now we are in an alley behind Valhalla, which is a pub in Wellington, New Zealand. And this is my first day here, and I somehow lucked into a experimental slash noise slash uh, drone night at Valhalla. So I decided to come check it out, and uh, Brad was kind enough to sit down and talk to me about his music. I guess let's start with how we got here tonight. This noise drone repeat is a regular, I guess, series that yeah. uh, that happens at Valhalla, and um, you uh, you've played this before, right? Yeah, this is not my first rodeo, um, but I've done a few of them. Uh, so so Brian, who, who puts it on, he's been running it for must be a few years now. So this is the the thirtieth one. Um, they tend to happen every sort of six or eight weeks, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, it's a niche genre. You can't do it too frequently. Um, <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's always a really supportive supportive crowd here. It's a nice little scene going. It's really into the just uh, people coming down and trying things out and experimenting. I went through the, the list of bands, or I guess performers, that were playing tonight. And um, I gravitated towards Soul Mortis as a metal guy for what well, may be obvious reasons, but let's let's say like right off the bat, that was some fucking evil shit. You know, besides the music, you have a skull while you play, and you have two uh, two red candles lit in front of you, and the music itself. Um, how, how would you describe what you make? Um, fuck. Um, I I've been been calling it sort of uh, sort of noisy symphonic drone kind of. Um, there's definitely like a like a uh, an ambient black metal kind of influence in it, um, like without uh, having any guitars on stage. So yeah, I don't, I don't know what what I would call it. <laughs> yeah, um, I find it hard to describe. But yeah, um, is, is is it fair to say that while a lot of drone tends to be guitar based, Soul Mortis is more synth based? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's um, so it's all synthesizers and. 
um, some sampling. Um, a lot of like, if you if you go into the Bandcamp um, page, a lot of the stuff is very orchestral. Some of it, um, lots of um, yeah, sampled orchestra patches and things going on there. Um, but then with lots of just sort of really basic um, you know, fundamental synthesis uh, turned up loud and distorted and everything to sort of get those drones happening underneath. Uh, I mean, just based on the performance tonight, I, I was under the impression that you were playing a, I guess, a composed piece, but that's not the case, right? Not tonight, no. Um, the, what I have been doing for a while, um, w when I started this, um, the idea was that I was never going to write anything. I was just going to always do it, um, going to improvise it off, you know, off the cuff. Um, I eventually, you know, and I did some recordings that way, um, eventually decided to do an album and actually um, do something more constructed and composed and sat down and, and did that and I've been performing that and some work based on that for a while um, but I've, I've started to become too I've, I'm feeling a little you know, I've got to have a computer on stage got to be running a backing track to actually do a lot of that, a lot of that stuff and I've started to feel a little too attached to the computer and a little you know you it's a little bit karaoke after a while um, so so tonight was an attempt to actually get rid of the computer and go back to just um, generate everything on the fly um, you know, still running some samples and things like that but it was you know if I don't push the button they don't happen and um, <laughs> you know if I push the wrong button the wrong thing happens uh, so you know it's a good opportunity to just sort of uh, strip it back in that sense let's talk about your gear setup uh, besides the, th the synth what else are you working with um, so the, there's, I'm running a couple of, run, I'm going to sound like a shill for Roland actually, um, so I'm running a, a couple of the IRA um, pieces, so the Roland System 1M, the semi-modular one, um, and a Roland JV1010, which is a sort of late 90s module um, that just does a lot of everything, um, but you can't edit any of the patches on it because you need software that runs on it late 90s computer <laughs> um, uh, running a using a, an Anamoog app on an old iPad um, just for again drones um, running uh, off my, my phone I'm running the Beatwave app which is just a sampler um, that was sort of doing that's doing a lot of the recorded vocals and everything that I, that I um, brought from home kind of thing uh, and that was running all those pieces through, you know, distortion pedals, that kind of thing, and into a mixer with some on build, um, an MX1 Roland mixer, which has a bunch of effects built in, really cool stuff, so just playing with it.
tonight was mostly improv, but when you write, uh, what is your writing process like? Do you have your whole setup and then you record it, or do you compose separately and then try to play it through uh, your, your setup? Yeah, it's definitely a, a, a different process and in, in, in sitting down and composing. Um, the way, the well, for for this stuff anyway, when, I've, when I have decided to compose it, it's been um, a lot of approaching it as a sort of not as a classical piece but but taking you know, I have some classical training and so taking that and putting that together um, so setting up um, a full sort of orchestra's worth of equipment of sounds and playing melodies and and, and patterns and ideas and exploring with those and like you would you know uh, sort of writing any kind of song I guess you know, sitting down and coming up with ideas putting them together um, those sort of the way I do them, I do tend to lean, then develop them towards something that might leave space for more improv uh, stuff, um, and then come back around to the sort of more sort of pure melodic things. But the thing I try to do is sow a lot of like discordant stuff in there and noise, and try and get. Um, it, it's always been a noise project, so even when it's orchestral, it, it's, it's to, I want it to be. Cacophonous, <laughs> you know, um, and, and sort of get some uh, really uncomfortable stuff happening. Do you c record your live performances? Like, do you ever come back to something that you composed previously and like rework it based on something that you played live? No, <laughs> that's a short answer. Um, I'd like to, yeah. Um, I, I haven't. The, the the closest I've done is just sort of live jamming and then sort of um, you know, putting that up up online and, and kind of releasing that. Um, in the air quotes, you can't see that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, no, I haven't, haven't done that. But yeah, I'd like to do that. Though. I want to talk about the live presentation. Um, we touched on it a little bit with the uh, the skull and the candles. How important are those elements to your live performance? Um, certainly, over the last little while, they've they've been reasonably important. Um, as I said, um, I, I've kind of taken the computer away and stripped it back and really focused on just playing with the the sounds tonight and I've kind of done that with the visuals as well so when running a with a computer I've um, tended to pre-program a lot of um, video footage and everything to go with it to, and that's synchronized to the music to try and really get that kind of feel happening and lots of candles and all that kind of thing and really make it dark and evil um, but you know like I say stripped to bait tonight and it's a Thursday night so uh, <laughs> yeah so, so on a Saturday night we get the film projectors yeah, and uh, yeah. yeah 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 Saturday night <laughs> I, I have to say that the moment where like the lights changed and you were bathed in red light with like the fucking like candles in the front it was like this <laughs> this this is what this was been building up to um, yeah, you have to um, <laughs> give credit to the lighting guy for that yeah <laughs> is there an overall theme I know there are there aren't a lot of vocals to the music, but is there an overall theme to uh, your sound? I guess. Um, no, not really. Just just trying to create something something dark and, um, like I say, a little bit uncomfortable. Um, I, I don't know how well I managed to do that, but um, it's you know I, I I play around like in terms of the imagery and stuff um, that you see on um, online and stuff. I, I sort of play around with sort of the whole satanic thing, but it's not really a it's a theatrical device, you know, to, to create something dark. It's not anything I'm, I'm serious about in any way. Um, yeah. When did this project start, Soul Mortis? Oh, uh, good question. I, I feel like it would be about two years ago, maybe. A year and a half, two years ago. Um, it, it was kind of something started on a whim as a bit of a side project. Um, and... Uh, you know, people have been gravitating towards it for, for some reason, and <laughs> that's cool. Um, so, you know, I, I haven't been as busy with it as I possibly could be, I, and I kind of like to, to do more with it, I think. Um, but, you know, again, it's kind of niche genre in a small town at the far end of the, us end of the world. Um, you know, <laughs> the audience is limited. <laughs> well, I mean, th there was a fairly sizable audience tonight. I mean, even as a Thursday night, like, I feel like two dozen people is kind of amazing for a, for a noise, uh, noise night. Yeah, yeah, it, it does actually, it always surprises me, um, you know, when we, we get more people.
people along than you expect every so often and um, you have one of those nights where it works out and everyone's coming to, to see something and just, uh, it, it, it's, I think it's one of those cool sort of um, genres of music where all the performers come in and it is a, um, without wanting to sound wanky um, and, and call it art installation <laughs> um, but it is something that, that the people coming can, can take part in and, and kind of um, really if, if you want to you can come along and let yourself be enveloped by the music and the, the sounds and the visuals if they're running as well and, and just sort of um, you know you, you, you can take part in it as passively or as actively as you want to uh, and I think that's, that's really neat you, you get that with you know, other music as well but you don't get it with everything and I think there's a genuineness around it as well, sort of come down and it's usually one person on stage at a time, maybe two, um, and so they're genuinely trying to do something, trying to create something um, to put out there.
as somebody who's only ever performed with other people, is it scary to just be up there on your own? Uh, it used to be, yeah. I've, I've kind of gotten used to it now. Um, I've been doing solo projects of one form or another for a while. Um, so, yeah, kind of got used to that. Um, what is What I do miss is the kind of bouncing off other people when you're performing, especially when you're improvising, um, being able to work off what other people are doing. And, oh, that's, that's a cool idea. I'll, I'll you know, work off that. And you'd, this all quite organic thing happens when you've got more than one person together um so i'm sort of doing that with myself um but you know it's a it's a step up from doing it with a computer so <laughs> yeah i mean with with a computer at least you have one other thing to blame right when you're up there by yourself and it's just your synth and uh some effects pedals it's whoops i messed up <laughs> yeah yeah it is but on the other hand it's also you know i've got um you know uh, it's a noise project like yeah, unless there's, unless there's, there are no mistakes right yeah, kind of right yeah. you know i mean unless everything <laughs> stops there's you know who's gonna know um <laughs> i think the the i mentioned the dependency on the computer before and it's one of those things where if the computer does go down which has happened once or twice yeah everyone notices that <laughs> because it does stop you know um and you just go oh shit i had one I can't remember what, exactly what happened, but I knocked something with my foot that was important, obviously, uh, and just everything died. And it was um, it was about 30 seconds into the set as well, so it was yeah. Uh, but you know, as I say, these things happen. But yeah, it's um, the the single point of failure now is is at least the the power cord that's running to everything. So hopefully that'll stay stay put. <laughs> Uh, I'm curious about your musical background. Uh, what what led you to symphonic, evil, uh, drone kind of stuff? Uh, what led me to to this? Um, I mean, I've been into music since I was a kid. Um, I got into listening to metal at a, you know, my early teens, um, and I, I think um, around the same time, like around my mid-teens, I kind of discovered ambient music. Um, I was listening to a lot of like Lust Mord in particular. Still, I still listen to a lot of, um, and and so kind of started to eventually find out that there was this sort of all this crossover with um, metal and ambient and symphonic metal and um, ambient metal and um, yeah, just uh, um, and and I think the the I've been doing a lot of electronic work by myself for a long time. Um, so it was just sort of naturally a way to gravitate towards doing that sort of thing, the, the dark, um, noisy, drony stuff on my own without relying on other people. Um, was it a conscious choice not to use guitars or were you always just a, a keyboard slash synth, synth player? Um, yeah, it was a conscious choice in, in this place, in this, in this case. Um, I've done some guitaring before and it never goes very well because I'm really not very good at it <laughs> um, and that's, that's honestly never yet. stopped a lot of bands uh, yeah well <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah I you know I, I've done a bit um, it, it's probably the the single thing I'm worst at in, uh, musically um, and uh, I, it was a weird thing happening. You know, I've got a guitar at home, and a weird thing happened. I picked it up the other day for the first time in probably several months, and went, "Oh my! I, I feel like I can't even play anymore." Um, just sort of, you know, fudging my way through all these sort of basic riffs that I used to be able to play all right. So, yeah, it's at the moment, it's not a thing I'm going to do. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about your other musical projects. Uh, besides Soul Mortis, what uh, what do you have going on right now? Uh, so the main thing I've got going on is a synthwave project called Berserker, B Z Z R K R. Um, so I've been doing that for again a couple of years. Um, although that kind of grew out of like a, a like a electro glitch kind of breakcore project, and I just sort of. Went, eh, I'm going to make some wave one day, um, so so I went to do that. Um, you know, and that's um, that's a lot of fun. It's, it's again that I mean that's like sitting down at a computer writing loops and hooks and and riffs and putting those together and then getting up and performing with a computer. Um, 
and so it's very much everything is uh, very prescribed and preordained up front and you know you've got to know what you're doing and hit the spot right whereas the you know there's a lot more freedom playing playing this way in terms of being able to feel your way through something you know um and, and i i'm in a i've got an industrial project that's uh, running off and on um called Kello kinder um it's sort of a three-piece uh, industrial rock band kind of thing um so we, haven't, we haven't been very busy lately but we've got a i think our first gig in like two years is coming up in a couple of months so that'll be that'll be interesting and <laughs> see how that goes what do you do for, for that project is it basic keyboard stuff or yeah so i'm i'm um the, the main writer behind it of, of the music um and yeah I live i play play keys and synths and stuff so um and in the studio it's sort of a bit of guitaring and, and keyboards and all the programming and stuff and um we've got uh duncan who's a vocalist and lyricist so he records writes and records all the vocals and then um Anton is a guitarist who joins us live and he lives in Australia which is one of the reasons we haven't been doing much lately um, <laughs> so uh, he's coming over for this gig uh, just before Christmas so it'll be a lot of fun
what's next for you? For me? Musically? Musical. Uh jeez. Um I've got a I've got a Berserker gig coming up um next week for Halloween. Uh, that'll be fun. So we're we're doing a it's a Halloween covers night, so I've I've put together a set list of um synthwave covers from eighties horror horror films. So um horror and sci fi, so doing some a lot of lot, lot of John Carpenter? Yes, yeah, there's a, there's a whole John Carpenter segment in the middle. <laughs> so um, hopefully I don't um, you know, destroy it too much. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And uh, anything for Soul Mortis? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some more writing and try and get some more gigs together basically and, and just see what happens. I wanna I wanna do another album. Um, I, I don't quite know what form that's gonna take yet. Um, somewhere between the, the EP I put out last year and the, um, and the sort of more purely improvised stuff that I've been doing. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I, I kind of glossed over this, but let's talk about that EP that you put out. Yeah, so um, it was funny actually because I, I, I actually got approached to, to do it for someone who was running a cassette label uh, in Australia. Um, and they, you know, they said they needed X amount of music. And I thought, okay, well, if I've got a chance to do do a cassette with X time on it, I want to kind of have some structure to it and um, not just have you know, 40 minutes of, of drones um, with any, without any kind of journey to it, you know. Um, so, so sat down and we got all the, the orchestral VSTs out and um, got into to writing something. Um, I, I don't know what the, yeah, if the, uh, the approach was anything kind of, you know, too thought out other than what I was saying before about just trying to create something that was uh, kind of noisy and cacophonous and a little bit a little bit uncomfortable and um, fit it into two sides of tape. It's a weird thing writing for um, uh, fixed time, you know, um, it's something. That's, that's something I hadn't considered, like because it was a cassette release, you could only release, uh, so it's two 20 minute sides, is that what happened? Um, two 22 minute sides, right? Must have been something like that, yeah, yeah. I forget exactly what it was, but basically, yeah, you've got this this limited time, and you know, you you would have had that back in back in the day when everything was was on vinyl, and I guess I guess people are doing thinking about it more now that, that people are releasing on vinyl more again. But um, for that whole kind of CD CD through you know, CDs of 80 minutes, that's fucking heaps of time, and, and then sort of your pure digital release where you can just make it as long as you like. Um, so it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, having to work to a time frame and think about actually, right, moving moving a piece through and, and making sure it keeps moving and say everything you want to say in that time. And also sequencing, because you, you have to have a side A and a side B, and they both have to connect, but also work independently of each other. They've got to stand alone as well as, yeah, they've got to be like two, two halves of a, of a whole, you know, and, and um, yeah, so that's, it's, it's, a, it's a really fun challenge. I really enjoy that, and it's kind of like... Um, playlisting your own music kind of thing to, to tell little, little stories uh, in and amongst the whole story. Not that there really is a story to, to the Diabolus EP. It's just, um, it's, it just is. <laughs> and it's now on Bandcamp, is that correct? It's on Bandcamp, yeah. Um, so the cassette release, um, basically I sent it off to this guy and he told me he did it, but I never... I don't know. I don't know what happened. Um, <laughs> so I put it on Bandcamp, and that's where it is. Um, so there might be some secret, some cassettes out there in the wild somewhere. Um, I don't know where they are, um, but yeah, it's all good. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brian. No worries. Thank you.